Hi, this is Amy from AdventureBox. In the last video I made, I talked about different options we have for creating a world in AdventureBox. But what about after the world has been created? It has nothing. That's not very fun, is it? So in this video, I'll talk about how to spice the world up by adding stuff to it. Now, wh why would you want to do that? Aside from the world being pretty lacking, you actually gain experience points from editing your worlds. And fun worlds attract players, which means a profit for you. You see, the more other players play your games, the more gold and experience points you earn. So to attract players, you want to fill your world with cool stuff. The players have fun and you make money. Everybody's happy. Let's do this. Let's start by going over the general controls for the maker. You control the camera with W, A, S, D, as well as G and B if you want. Left clicking, if you're not holding anything, deletes blocks, as you can see here. Hold and drag to delete several, or add several blocks if you are holding one. To undo an action, just press Ctrl Z on your keyboard. Right clicking any block, item or creature while not holding anything will open a menu. Hold down the right mouse button and move the mouse to control the camera. The options in the menu will depend on what you've right clicked. For example, right clicking the sky here will let you change the weather, look, snow. Change the time of day in your world or have a day-night cycle and configure lighting settings. So if you want to make a snowy evening or raining afternoon, it's up to you. By the way, you can change these controls at any time by pressing escape and then clicking options in the window that pops up. Now with that out of the way, let's get to adding stuff. Now you might have noticed this menu over to the left, right? This is your palette and it holds all the different options for editing your world. It's the same menu options as when you right click a block. Speaking of blocks, let's start with them. Simply put, blocks are the different materials you can use to build things in your world. If you have experience with Minecraft, you'll find this familiar. Click any of the blocks to place them out in the world. Or if the block you want already exists in the game world, you may have a drip tool so that lets you copy. I could use these water blocks to create a lake. But why would I do that when I could add lava? There! Now it's a bit more exciting, right? But let's say you don't want to build things all the time. That's where the structures come in. Just open the palette, click Get More Structures and select the structure you want. Clicking it once will add one of the desired structure to your palette, so if you want more, just click on it multiple times. Now we have a cathedral, so we can just place it out. By the way, the H key on your keyboard lets you rotate any structure, item or creature you're currently holding. Uh, I made the cathedral inaccessible. Oops. Well, this isn't only so much you can do with blocks and structures, though. What if you want to decorate with things that aren't as gigantic or have important stuff for or a quest? Then it's items you want. Open the palette, say like get more items and select the item you want. Let's select a table and a cake. And again, just like structures, click to place them out. Now we have a birthday party going on! Yay! But this birthday party seems a bit lacking. Where's all the people? Nowhere, that's where. Because we haven't added any, added any yet. Which brings us to creatures. Open the creature palette and you'll see all of the creatures you've created previously. Making creatures is a bit more of a process, so I'll get, go into more detail about this in another video. Like before, place a creature into the world by clicking in the palette. Like so. If you hold shift, you can place out multiple creatures, items, or structures. You can only place out as many items or structures as you have in your palette, but you can create as many copies of a creature as you want. Create an army if you want to. Stop! Unlike everyone else, this guy back here has a red symbol over his head. What is that? That indicates that his behavior is aggressive. Some created creatures will be hostile by default. If you want to change the behavior, just right-click the creature, select this head symbol here, and click on the behavior you want. There! All better! Now we have some people here. Finally, some population. But they're not a very talk active bunch, are they? In fact, this whole world is quiet. Too quiet. If you want the world to be a bit more lively in the audio department, then sound is what you're after. There are three categories for sound. Effect is, well, sound effect. Stuff like birdsong, metal clanging, and my personal favorite, the Wilhelm scream. Ah! Atmosphere is essentially background noise. Like it's there, but it's more subtle. Like this crowd noise. And music is just what you think it is. Music that plays. You know how this goes by now. Select the sounds you want and they'll appear in the palette. Click them to place them out. Now these won't play in the whole world, just in the area where you place them. This allows you to have different sounds and music for different places in your world. The symbol only indicates the, to the creator what type of sound it is and where you place the sound and therefore where it will play the loudest. Ah, the peaceful murmur of a crowd. And a guy in the back who just won't stop screaming. Just like any party you've ever been to. What do you mean that's not normal? It isn't? Then what kinds of parties have I been to? In an RPG, you'd like some way to get better gear, right? And all of that gold is weighing down your pockets. What is an adventurer to do? They go to a shop, of course. 
Different shops will sell different things, such as armor, weapons, shields and fancy clothes. The inventories will also change depending on if the shop is run by a human, dwarf or goblin. You know the drill, select the shop you want, add it to the palette and click to place it out. You can't place out shops and battlefields though, you don't have time to stop when you've always got a bullet right between the eyes. Here's the best part about having shops in your world. A percentage of the gold they earn from players who visit your world and buy stuff is gold that goes to you. The higher level you are, the more you earn per player. But the shops can only hold a maximum of 2000 gold, so be sure to empty them often to make loads of money. Ah, young aspiring entrepreneur decides to take this party opportunity to earn some cash for themselves. Too bad they have to pay a sum of what they earn, but if they want to live here, they have to pay taxes, right? Now, time to talk about one of Adventure Box's main features, the ability to link your world to other players' worlds. That's done by using portals. Open the portal palette to get them. There are different types of portal designs, but they all work the same way, basically. Click the portal you want to add to the palette, then click on it to place it out. When you do, the game will ask you to write the name of the world you want to link your world to. Write the name and click the thumbnail of the world you want to link to. Clicking again removes the link. Remember that the world you want to link has to be published for this to work. You can place up to 5 portals in a world, and for every placed portal, you earn 100 experience points. I'll keep this one short because the purpose of stories here is simply an overview of what quests and event triggers you have in the world. And what are those things? Well, it's more than a mouthful, so I'll talk about it in another video. Now, let's say that a player thinks this birthday party sucks and wants to explore the farthest reaches of this world only to die in a tragic lava lake accident. They will respond right back at the entry portal near the lame birthday party. Dang it! Not if you place out checkpoints though, or location flags as they're known as here. The palette shows all of the location flags you placed out in your world, and clicking them here will take you straight to them. Making one couldn't be simpler. Just click, drop a new location flag, place it out anywhere in the world, and name the location. Now if any player finds a flag and then die, they'll respond at the latest location flag they found. Hooray! Now the last thing I want to talk about today is this symbol down here in the right corner of the screen. Clicking on it brings up the options menu for the game world, so let's go over them quick and see what they do. The red button closes your game world, the arrow button or F on your keyboard lets you toggle the full screen, the megaphone or M on your keyboard lets you mute or unmute sound, the camera or P on your keyboard lets you take pictures of your world, the list button closes the options menu, the cloud lets you publish or unpublish your world, either giving players the option to see it or denying them from seeing it. The document lets you change the world profile settings, which are things such as the game's name, description, tags to let other players find it easier when searching, and the thumbnail. The picture is the snapshot album, which lets you look at the pictures you've taken. Lastly, this little guy, or R on your keyboard, lets you jump between maker mode and player mode, letting you playtest your game. And that just about covers it, I believe. Leave a comment down below, send us an email, or go to the Adventure Box Discord server for further questions. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.